This is my, oh, this is my treasure. Oh, oh, oh. I have one for Brinton and New Haven, Missouri, and Edison, Pennsylvania, Birmingham, Alabama. This one is from Sri Lanka, India, and it was a minister who was on a train who met an American who had an article about Arlene's flowers. I see calls every week and just says, how are you doing, sister? And then I got the Bible from a church in Yakima that came down, and they came to the shop and uh, just said they were behind us and that they were thinking of us, and very, very special. We just want to do something out of the ordinary, something that tickles somebody's fancy or makes them smile or whatever. Just get these ideas in your head, and, and uh, you really can't describe them. You know, I don't have a, I don't have a theory about it or anything. I just do it. Well, I think most artistic people, you know, especially painters, I think they put their heart into their arrangements. It's part of them. It's part of who they are. And I think that's the same thing with a florist. The joy of being here so long is to get to know people personally. <laughs> I don't consider the people that walk in the door customers. They're just people that want something to please somebody else, and that's my job. She is the most kind, gentlest soul you'll ever meet. You go into her shop, you're going to get a hug. And so she's very warm. And she had established a really warm relationship with Rob Ingersoll. Um, who had been in nine years and would come in and spend a good amount of money throughout the year and they had gotten to know each other pretty well. He has a very creative mind and so we just sort of hit it off. At one point he decided to get married a few months after same-sex marriage became legal in Washington State and he of course wanted her to do it. That was a real struggle to, to decide what to do with that. My husband and I talked it over, and you know, as much as I love Rob, I just couldn't, couldn't be a part of that. If I did Rob's wedding, it would be from my heart, because I, I think he's a really special person, and I would want to make it really special for him. So it wasn't something that I flippantly said, oh, I'm not going to do Rob's wedding because he's gay. When I talked to Rob, I did not think this would be a, a major issue. I was very surprised at that. The Attorney General's action in this case is unprecedented in Washington State. We have never had an Attorney General take the position that this Attorney General has taken. Now the ACLU's piled on, and the same-sex couple have sued her as well. And interestingly, um, they have sued her in her personal capacity as well as her business. So she is at great risk. As a result of serving someone lovingly and admittedly in a kind way for nine years and because you won't do one same-sex wedding, you're gonna lose your house or your business. And she's been working in this business for 40 years. I've read a lot of hate mail over the years, but what I've read in this case just is stunning. It's so, it makes you sick to your stomach when just volumes after volumes, thousands of pages. People are filled with hate and refuse to even listen to what the real story is and how angry and frustrated and it's just so sad. This is about marriage. It's not about bigotry. She knew of their relationship, they provided, she provided flowers that they sent to each other, but when it came to marriage, that was the line. Because as she'll tell you, marriage represents the relationship of Christ and his church. It's a sacred covenant. Marriage is a sacred, very sacred thing. You want flowers for your anniversary, or your birthday, or whatever, that's fine. But I just cannot do a same-sex marriage. So this case in particular is coercing someone to engage in expression, and that's against America's tradition, and it's unconstitutional. 
it's also unnecessary. There are lots of florists. If you look in the Tri-Cities area, there's like three pages in the yellow pages of florists that could have served this couple. Um, they've even admitted that after they received enough offers for free wedding arrangements to do 20 different weddings. But yet, what's being set up here is that's not good enough. It's not good enough that there are other florists. We have to coerce everyone to do what we want them to do, even if it violates religious convictions. I have to have faith that he's going to protect me and uh, give me the courage and the knowledge and the wisdom to, to stand firm on this, but uh, also help me understand what obedience is and what, I'm going to cry, <clears throat> and what following Christ is. You, know, you, can't, you can't sit on the fence, like he says, you can't be lukewarm. And that's what I was, I was lukewarm. There now, God bless you, sister. We are all praying for you. Stand with you 100%, Pastor Tony. God will hold your hand no matter what. God bless Opal. I will certainly continue to pray for you and thank you for your commitment. Lord bless Dan Greer. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God bless you, Cheryl Sampson. Rest in Jesus, you're a daughter of the King. That one got me. May God's strength be with you, praying for you. Daisy family. Hope all goes well. Just remember God loves you.